Okay. I'm going to show you how to measure capacitor resonance and ESR using your vector network analyzer. I'm using a Siglent SVA1015X, but you can use any network analyzer that covers this frequency range. I'm also using the new uh, beta firmware for this uh, analyzer because I'm a, a, I've been a beta tester for the firmware for about a year. And one of the things I really like about this new firmware is the log frequency sweep. And the log frequency sweep, besides making very pretty graphs when you measure components or amplifiers, it enables you to measure a very wide range of capacitors without changing settings. Right now I have the network analyzer on its widest sweep range from 100 kilohertz up to 1.5 gigahertz. So let's take a 2.2 microfarad capacitor and I'll plug it in. Okay, and you can see this valley here. I could use the valley function on the marker. We'll go right to the valley and the, and the marker will tell me the depth of this valley. And the depth of that valley is related to the ESR and I'll explain that later. And the, it gives me the, 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 where that valley is, is essentially the capacitor resonance. Now this capacitor is resonating at almost exactly one megahertz. Now I'm going to take a 3.9 picofarad capacitor and put it in the fixture. Yes. Or to at least try to. There I go. Okay, and now you can see this valley's moved up. I hit the valley marker, and this one is now at 810 megahertz. So that's almost three decades of a frequency away, and approximately six decades of capacitance difference. If you're using a linear sweep, you could still do these measurements, but you're constantly going to have to be changing the uh, frequency range depending on the capacitor you're measuring. I can put in any capacitor, pretty much. Here's a 0.1 microfarad, and it works. Now, normally I use a range of 1 megahertz to 1.5 gigahertz, I mean, to one gigahertz, I mean, because I haven't had anything resonate higher than that, the, the 800 uh, megahertz one I've shown you so far. So to do that, I hit the frequency button, hit the start frequency, select one megahertz, hit the stop frequency button, hit one gigahertz. Then I ha let, let me pull this out of the fixture. Now I go back, to, I have to calibrate the fixture now. So I just do a, a through cal with nothing in the fixture. So now I've done through cal. I'll turn the traces back on and go to peak mode. Okay, and so now here, let's say 75 picofarad silver mica capacitor. And I plug it in and then hit the valley, it's resonating at 173 megahertz. Now the other features they have in this beta firmware that I'm using is that they, you can now adjust the power output coming out of port one. F right now I have it on the default value of zero dBm, but I could turn it down to 20, which is a good feature for uh, measuring amplifiers. And if you go to amplitude, I can now adjust the input attenuator on this port, I have it set at zero. The default value is 15 dB, but what I've done is I've taken that 15 dB of attenuation and put it on the cables to suppress reflections on the cables to get better measurements. I have a six dB attenuator here and one on the input to port two, and then coming from port one, I have a three dB attenuator going into the fixture.
Now let's talk about fixtures. This is one I found while I was doing some research. This is a beautifully designed uh, coplanar, grounded actually, grounded coplanar microstrip with the picket fence uh, um, uh, vias along the side of it. It's bolted down to a probably a machine piece of metal to keep it flat and keep it from flexing. It may even be glued down with uh, conductive epoxy. It's gold plated, so when you put parts on, um, they'll you'll get good contact and you know machined matched connectors. This thing will work well into the uh, gigahertz region. Then here's my bodge job of a fixture. Um, I threw this together to try it out, and it's actually worked out much better than I thought it would. So I have two uh, SMA connectors here. These are inexpensive Chinese connectors I bought off of eBay. And I've put them as close together as they will work. Um, you need the space between them so that you can screw the connectors on. And then here's a socket. I've used gold-plated pins in the socket. This socket pin is connected to the connectors. You see over here, here's the wire from the connector to the socket pin and then back over to the other connector. And then the rest of these socket pins are connected to the ground. And so, yeah, this is the backside. You can see my lovely solder job and the ubiquitous white dog hair. Now, here's a, a through uh, measurement. What I did is I used this SMA through connector and calibrated on that first and then connected to the fixture. Now, you'll notice over here that the, the scale here is 0.2 dB per division. So this is very fine. And if we look here, that the, the, the through here is flat out past 100 megahertz and when we get to 300 megahertz it's dropped about 0.1 db and now this bending here is actually in the in the phase is really just due to the path length difference between this and the the uh, wires in that fixture so my initial guess is to what the fixture looks like is this. And it's just a guess based on some additional measurements I made, which I'll include in downloadable charts in the links below this video. And, um, uh, you know, I could be off by a factor of three on any of these values pretty easily. So the, this parasitic L, it comes from, you know, the socket pins in the fixture, and it will lower the frequency resonance, uh, the resonant frequency, but it doesn't change the ESR. And th the ESRs were that you measure will be in the milliohms, and one of the things that can affect that is contact resistance when you plug the parts into the fixture, because contact can resistance, if you're not careful, can be in the milliohms. So I, but I used uh, gold-plated uh, contacts. If you could go back and look at the picture of the fixture. So I'm going to assume, based on my measurements and my assumptions, that below 100 megahertz, I can just say that the fixture looks like this, where this Z is the shunt impedance I'm measuring. So let's, how do we get uh, ESR from that, sh that shunt impedance? Well, first we assume we just have this simple shunt impedance. And then we write the Z parameter matrix for that, where this is the two port matrix and the two port matrix for a single shunt element is just Z in every position where Z is a complex quantity. Now, if we assume the Z is a, the simplified capacitor model that's fairly standard, um, we, we can plug the expression for that in there. But if at res resonance, we, which and the frequency of resonance can be calculated like this, the capacitor and the inductor cancel each other out, and the Z is essentially just is ESR. And so if we take the Z parameter matrix of that, uh, 
that Z parameter matrix then becomes ESR, which is now a real number, not a complex number for all four Z parameters. So math is getting much easier because now all the numbers are real and they're all the same. If we use a two-port parameter conversion table, we can find S21 as a function of the Z parameters. And then we can solve for ESR as a function of S21. And this is the result. So if you look here, this would be the depth of the valley you, down here, the minimum S21. And over here is for a given S21, this will, gives you the, the equivalent ESR. And so uh, we can probably measure easily down to ESRs of uh, 10 milliohms. And um, you can measure up above 10 ohms, but you wouldn't want to use a capacitor with an ESR that high. So this is kind of the range. This is that you can measure pretty easily. And uh, it's a useful range. Now, I've made a printable version of this chart as well as a conversion table, and you'll find links to those included in the video description below. So after... Uh, so now I have the fixture. We do a through calibration on the fixture, which I showed in the video, and it looks like this. So the, we have 0 dB flat and 0 degrees flat and nothing in the fixture. So let's check to make sure that, you know, my calculations are okay. I'll put a 10 ohm carbon film resistor in there. And, and down here below, you know, at lower frequencies, I get minus 10.9 dB. And if you plug it into the equation or look at my chart or graph, that equates to 10 ohms. So things look okay. And then as we go up here at higher frequencies, this is starting to rise probably because of series inductance from this resistor. Now here's a 0.1 microfarad uh, capacitor plugged into the socket, and it's resonating at 5 megahertz, and the minimum value is uh, minus 51.5 dB, and that corresponds to uh, 67 milliohms of ESR. Now the purple trace here is is phase. And uh, I do that to see how close I am to the actual m minimum because at resonance, the phase should be zero degrees. Um, you may not hit it because the, the points can be a little bit on either side of the resonance. But since there's 751 points, they're close enough. So here's another 0.1 microfarad capacitor, 42 milliohms uh, ESR. Here's a uh, 0.047 uh, capacitor uh, with 319 milliohms of ESR. It's a 0.01 microfarad capacitor. So now the, its resonance is up at 15 megahertz. Here's some uh, 680 picofarad capacitors. And, one, and this one has a resonance of 59 megahertz. 75 picofarad silver mica, we're up at 173 megahertz. Here's a 56 picofarad AVX, um, we're 233 megahertz in essentially 0.4 ohms ESR. Here's a 8 picofarad white tubular ceramic, a something that uh, old tube uh, gear restorers would love to have. I have a bag full of these. And this is 417 milliohms at 539 megahertz resonant frequency. And here's a 3.9 picofarad encapsulated glass ceramic capacitor, and it's resonating at a little over 800 megahertz with an ESR of 1.05 ohms. Now the ESRs up above 100 megahertz, I don't know that that's really the values. They may be lower or higher. I haven't gone through the math. I believe in be the, the readings below 100 megahertz, but I think, you know, this is still useful for comparing components up in this region.
Anyway, so here's a 0.22 microfarad polyester capacitor. These leads were so fat, I had to just hold it against the fixture. It would, they wouldn't fit in the fixture. And it resonates at 2.4 megahertz. And it's got a 20 milliohm ESR. Anyway, so here's the conclusion. I've presented a simple method for measurement of capacitor resonance and ESR with a vector network analyzer. You get good results up to 100 megahertz. The resonant frequency will be slightly low because of the parasitic inductance in the fixture. You'll get usable results up to a gigahertz, and I think they're good for uh, capacitor comparison and sorting. The accuracy in the frequency range could be improved with a better fixture. It needs to be adapted to measure surface mount components as well. The usefulness of the method is greatly enhanced by Siglent's new beta firmware with the log frequency sweep. And because uh, a, a 100 kilohertz to 1 gigahertz sweep allows me to measure capacitances from 3 picofarads up to 10 microfarads without changing settings. This is a, currently only a beta firmware feature and I don't know when the release date will be. This methodology works for any VNA that covers this frequency range. Even a nano VNA will work. And the log frequency sweep is a nice to have, but is not required to make these measurements work. Anyway, I hope you like this video. And if you do, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos from me, please subscribe. Thank you for watching.